Greetings in the name of our risen Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. The Board of Elders of Taylor Brethren Church has decided to try and resume Sunday worship in the sanctuary in two weeks on June the 14th. On behalf of the team who has presented worship on YouTube these last couple of months, thank you so very much for worshiping with us virtually every week. Whether or not we actually resume in-person worship on the 14th will depend on what the coronavirus is doing here in Taylor and in Williamson County. As the date approaches, we'll let our members know if our plans hold up or if we will have to wait a bit longer before coming back together. When we do resume worship in the sanctuary, hopefully we will be ready to live stream the services on YouTube every Sunday at 10.15 a.m. Central Time. And then the services will be posted on YouTube after each live stream. So if you are homebound or if you live in other areas of Texas or in other areas of the country, I invite you to continue worshiping with us virtually. Let us pray. Loving Father, we are here to celebrate your gift of the Holy Spirit to the church, a gift which sets hearts afire, a gift that transforms lives. Even as your spirit enabled believers so very long ago to announce your good news to the world, so may we be enabled here and now. May the celebration of your spirit remind us of your presence and your promises. Through Christ our Lord, amen. Debbie and Becky will now play Breathe on Me, Breath of God. Let us pray. God of grace and glory, God of Easter and Pentecost, God who has come and who continues to come, visit us again today. Send forth your spirit into our hearts that we might again be delivered from the bondage of fear, sin, death, and go forth in the power of your love. But how forgetful we are, O oh God, how fervently we have prayed for you to deliver us in the past, and yet how quick we are to forget yesterday's answered prayers in light of today's struggles. We proclaim the birth, the death, the resurrection of the Christ, but we fail to claim that victory in our lives. We remember today on this Pentecost Sunday 
the promised helper, the Holy Spirit. And yet how quick we are to accuse you of abandoning us in times of trial. Help our unbelief. Send forth your spirit that we might become bold witnesses testifying to your presence in our lives. Help us to celebrate Pentecost not only with lips, but with hearts surrendered to you. And let us live the days ahead in the fullness of your promise to be with us now and for eternity. Send forth your spirit into our homes that the peace of Christ would truly reign. Send forth your spirit into our churches that our lives may be touched and restored by the living Christ. Send forth your spirit into every part of our lives and send forth your spirit into all who need your power of healing, comfort, and renewal. Be with all who struggle to find a way through this horrible pandemic. Many are sick. Give them comfort, strength, healing. Many are weary. Healthcare providers and first responders are besieged by the sheer numbers of patients. Please protect them, strengthen them, and give them reason to hope. Many are lonely. Be with them and help them to be connected to others. Many are out of work. Provide the means for them to persevere and survive until they can resume their jobs. Many are rushing to find treatments and vaccines. Enlighten them, open the right doors, and lead them to the answers they seek. Many have died. Be with all who grieve and embrace them with your perfect peace. Bring people's hearts together in this nation that is so fractured and conflicted along racial lines, class lines, and lines of privilege and gender. Enable us to see every person as having equal worth. Enable us to treat every person with respect. And even if we cannot truly walk in one another's shoes, enable us at least to listen more carefully to one another. In ways both big and small, make all of us agents of reconciliation. Give us hearts whose desire is to bring people together. Send all of us forth into the world, just as you sent the first disciples, speaking of your love with such power and conviction that all who hear will be amazed. Breathe new life into all who fear they have reached a dead end. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, who taught us when we pray to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Our reading from God's holy word for this Sunday of Pentecost is Acts chapter 2, the first 21 verses, which describe for us what happened on that day of Pentecost, roughly 2,000 years ago. 
The name Pentecost comes from the Greek word meaning 50 and refers to a festival that was celebrated on the 50th day after Passover. The apostles and other followers of Jesus were gathered together in Jerusalem when the Holy Spirit filled the apostles and empowered them to share the message of the gospel with people of different languages. Beginning with verse 1. When the day of Pentecost came, all the believers were gathered together in one place. Suddenly, there was a noise from the sky, which sounded like a strong wind blowing, and it filled the whole house where they were sitting. Then, they saw what looked like tongues of fire, which spread out and touched each person there. They were all filled with the Holy Spirit and began to talk in other languages as the Spirit enabled them to speak. There were Jews living in Jerusalem, religious people who had come from every country in the world. When they heard this noise, a large crowd gathered. They were all excited because all of them heard the believers speaking in their own languages. In amazement and wonder, they exclaimed, These people who are talking like this are Galileans. How is it then that all of us hear them speaking in our own native languages? We are from Parthia, Medea, and Elam, from Mesopotamia, Judea, and Cappadocia, from Pontus and Asia, from Phrygia and Pamphylia, from Egypt and the regions of Libya near Cyrene. Some of us are from Rome, both Jews and Gentiles converted to Judaism, and some of us are from Crete and Arabia. Yet all of us hear them speaking in our own languages about the great things that God has done. Amazed and confused, they kept asking each other, what does this mean? But others made fun of the believers, saying, these people are drunk. Then Peter stood up with the other eleven apostles and in a loud voice began to speak to the crowd. Fellow Jews and all of you who live in Jerusalem, listen to me and let me tell you what this means. These people are not drunk, as you suppose. It is only nine o'clock in the morning. Instead, this is what the prophet Joel spoke about. This is what I will do in the last days, God says. I will pour out my spirit on everyone. Your sons and daughters will proclaim my message. Your young men will see visions. Both old and young will have dreams. Yes, even on my servants, men and women, I will pour out my spirit in those days, and they will proclaim my message. I will perform miracles in the sky above and wonders on the earth below. There will be blood, fire, and thick smoke. The sun will be darkened, and the moon will turn red as blood before the great and glorious day of the Lord comes. And then, whoever calls out to the Lord for help will be saved. Amen. Debbie and Becky will now play Wherever the Wind Blows.
if you don't live in Taylor, Texas, then you may not be aware that in this town, ducks rule. The school mascot is a duck. And in the autumn every year, around the time of homecoming, there will usually be this big banner stretched across Main Street that reads, once a duck, always a duck. But it's not just the kind of ducks who walk and talk and string banners up who are all the rage. It's also the short kind of ducks who waddle and quack and swim and fly. Everybody in Taylor breaks for ducks, even the bad people in town, or so I'm told. I realize this more than ever after a couple of recent experiences. In the first instance, I was driving down Drake Lane, get it, Drake Lane, I'm telling you, people in this town are crazy about ducks. Anyway, I'm driving down Drake Lane when I come upon a lone duck just make, taking his sweet time crossing the street. So I carefully maneuver around the critter, but he never changes direction. He doesn't stop to give my big old car a wide berth. He doesn't change his waddling speed or anything. He just completely ignores me. After I get around him, I look back in the rearview mirror and he's still going on his merry way across the street like nothing happened. Then a few days later, I'm driving on Drake again when I see a pickup stopped at a yield sign and there in front of the truck is a duck. The little bird's just standing there and looking up at the driver of the pickup truck like, come on, just try it, I dare you. For all I know, it was probably the same duck I saw before with an attitude. Though, come to think of it, there's a lot of those in Taylor, Texas. Well, the truck wouldn't move and the duck wouldn't move. But when I went on by and then looked back, the duck had apparently gotten bored with his little game of chicken and nonchalantly had moved on so the truck could go. So just a word of caution, if you ever find yourself in Taylor, Texas and you're driving on Drake Lane, the ducks take that name seriously and they act like they own the street. If only all of us were as careful about noticing and stopping for other matters of concern besides just ducks. We'll notice a small aquatic fowl in the middle of the street and we'll give it a wide berth. But we tend not to be nearly as attentive when it comes to the people we encounter on the streets, in the stores, at work, at school, at church, even at home. There are people and there are situations which should cause us to pause for a bit, to observe to reflect and then to respond out of compassion and love. The problem is we have gotten to the point where we can't stop or we won't. My family and I were eating outside once at a barbecue joint that was out in the countryside. It was away from any big city when we kept hearing car horns. Well, turns out there were so many cars trying to get into the one narrow entrance to this barbecue place that one or two cars would be stuck out on the, on the road waiting to turn in. 
then behind those cars would be another that didn't want barbecue. He just wanted to be on his way. And he would sit on his horn until the cars in front would get out of the way. He couldn't even wait the minute or so that it took for the road to clear. And this wasn't an isolated incident that happened. It happened over and over throughout our visit. Why is it we think we've got to be everywhere yesterday? And why do we think our wants and our needs and our schedules are more important than everyone else's? Well, on the day of Pentecost, in the book of Acts, people did stop. On that Pentecost, at least some people got the message that there are more important things in life than just looking out for ourselves. Say what you want about the, the miraculous rushing wind and the, the, the tongues of fire and the disciples speaking in strange foreign languages. What I see to be the miracle of Pentecost is that people actually listen to one another. People actually connected with one another. God got through to us, or at least to some of us, because granted, some of the folks who heard the disciples preach that day thought, they had a little too much to drink, which just goes to show how hard it is to make an emotional and spiritual connection with one another. The disciples made themselves available to God to be used as God wished. The disciples boldly preached they boldly reached out in love, and they put their faith into practice. And yet, part of the response to all of that was ridicule. How many times have you tried to make an emotional or spiritual connection with someone, but your efforts were misinterpreted? Did you give up? Giving up is easy, you know, and we do it way too often. We give up on our families and friends. We give up on our jobs. We give up on the practices intended to keep us safe during this pandemic. Maybe we give up on our church. We say that there's no possibility of renewal. There's no possibility of new life, new purpose, new vision, new ministry. Maybe we give up on ourselves. And we take the path of least resistance, which usually means we just keep on moving along with our usual routine lives, we follow our routine path. We don't stop. We don't even slow down. We pretend we're too busy and too tapped out of everything to even notice each other, to notice the world around us, to notice the God within us crying out for attention, and we die a little more inside every day because of our continued disconnection from each other, and especially because of our continued disconnection from God, the only source of our true life. People can break for ducks 
without even thinking about it. So why can't we break more for people, especially people who are different from us? The racial strife and political strife and social strife and economic strife in this country are all consequences of our unwillingness to break for those who are different. And why can't we break for God? Why can't we stop, even for a moment, for the one who made us, so that God might at least have the opportunity to connect us to one another and to God's self. For the sake of the church, for the sake of this nation, as well as for our own sakes, let's give it a try, if we dare. Let us pray. Lord God, on this day of Pentecost, and for all the days to come, may the fire of your Holy Spirit burn away our complacency and shallowness and self-centeredness. And even as this world tries to drive people apart, may the rushing wind of your Spirit overcome the world and move people ever more closely together with one another and with you. In the name of the risen Christ, amen. In the days to come, may you be a sign of God's living spirit in this world. Let your life witness to Christ's love. Let your words bring reconciliation. Let your thoughts be of peace. Let your touch bring healing. Let your actions count for justice. Be a sign of hope and a beacon of joy. Wherever you go, may God's love, God's peace, God's blessings go with you. Amen.